What's going on? It's Nainan here at Nalitech Studio, so welcome. So today we are looking at how to create this beautiful drawing, which is a simple one at that, because we are using basic AgiCAD elements, like a spline, for example. Here you can see that this is a spline that shows some topographical information on site. And these are just objects that are scattered to show tree positions and these are essentially image fields as you can see it's a paver which you can do if you find images which are seamless let's jump straight into the tutorial all right so this is kind of where i started from I have different elements here which I'd like to override with some image textures and in order to do that we want to be able to upload the image textures so a good workflow would be to come to file libraries and objects and go to library manager and load in your image textures so I kind of come in here and click add and choose folder which I'd like to add the images that I've used I have attached them in the link below so be sure to check that out so and say okay our images and everything have been added how do we create them so we need to go to options element attributes and fields and now we can create a new field by just clicking on new and then we say image field so right now i'm going to create something like grass cover and i'll say okay and of course i need to browse and look for where it is on my pc and because i attached it in the library you can see that my folder is already here so i found my grass textures and pick one of them like this one right here and i say okay i believe this should be about two by two so you can put in the dimensions that you so wish to see and as well you might want to check cover fill right here such that now it's available as a cover fill and the 2d display here you can decide what it's going to look like since it's a mat i can you know check everything every box here but this is not as important uh, it's just for 2d identification but so i'll say okay and that is been added and let me go back and load in the others first as well if i kind of go to this side here you can see that the grass cover is there it's been added so i click new to create a new solid and this one is going to be my road surface of course it's going to be an image view i create and browse for it so under my folder i have a an asphalt road surface here i load it in it's supposed to be about i think two by two as well make it available for cover fields if you so wish you can change the 2d representation but mm, i'll keep it like that and before i say okay i can create another one by clicking new and i name this pavement i say it's an image field i say okay and it's been added and i say browse to find it and come here and there you are say okay and now it's been loaded and this one i believe is about a meter by a meter i'll say okay and those images have been added so now let's jump off to the fun part where we create the place where we're going to add them so i'm going to mark you everything here and create a new 3d document because we need some shadows which we are going to work on with the drawing so right click and say new 3d document here i can call it maybe my sun shadows and i say create it will be generated so this is what we have as the drawing so Let's go into the 3D document settings. And in the settings, the first thing that I like to change is the cut elements because that's what you are immediately looking at. And I like to override everything with black such that, you know, it's clear that we are cutting something here. So make everything black. And I'll go in here in the uncut. I change that to a uniform pen, which I will change to a background color. So. I'm getting rid of all colors and making that black and white drawing. Under uniform, uncut pen. Yeah, 
I think I'd like to get rid of all the orange, what everything, every color there, because I can see green, stuff like that. And let's give them black as well. And could leave everything else here. I go to the sun shadow and you say, okay, because, you know, I wanted to create this as a sun shadow drawing. I'd like to have them as subtle as possible. So 25% is going to work for me for this drawing. So I say, okay, and I leave it to generate. So right now there's one more thing that we have left out, which is the context. So we want to be able to go back in the settings and be sure to <clears throat> under flow plan, show the stories below. Yeah, one story is enough. We say, okay. And there we have our site information because it was on a story below. So this is what we have as the base kind of thing. And um, this thing that we are going to do is it should have been possible in Akika 25 because of the ability to add 2D image textures in the action sections and elevations. But unfortunately, it's not yet even available in 3D documents, which uh, is very disappointing because you can add 2D image textures in sections and elevations, but you cannot add them in 3D documents. But right now, until this option is available for 3D documents, well, we have to do it the hard way. So I'm going to get everything and copy them. And the con here is that what we are doing is not updatable. So we have to trade off the ability to update, but you know, Sometimes we have to do what we have to do. So let's go to the worksheet here and say new through the document and create a new document. And I'm going to call this my site plan because this is where the magic is going to happen. And I say create and I'm going to paste in the work which I have copied from the free document. And of course, it's going to take some time depending on the strength of your machine. But you just have to be a little bit patient. So now, once everything is finished loading, we have everything converted into fields and lines, essentially. But it's powerful because, you know, it still reads as though it's a 3D Im document thing. All we have to do is to select the parts that are supposed to be converted into an image fill. And you can group it if you want by Ctrl G such that it's easy to select the next time you try to select it. And I'm going to change that to grass cover and boom, there you have it. So now we have this high definition image, which is taking on the grass cover. And that's what you do for your road surfaces. If I select those two road surfaces, I go and pick the road surface. There we have it. And finally, we also have this pavement space. So we select all this paver space and we be sure to put in pavement and there we have it. So before we continue, we need to be able to add in the information about the site topo, which we have on the ground floor here and it's right here. So I'll select everything. It's grouped. So I will copy it from the ground floor go back into my worksheet and be able to paste that. So move it into place. And right now we have something which is uh, not yet there, but we will get it where we want it. So let's select everything. And as well, our green area here, which is our grass cover and right click and display order, send everything to back. So once we do that and click away, you can see that that information has been sent to the back. And in order to make it even more interesting, let's select these splines and change them to white or something closer to white. And there we have it. That looks like topographical information now. And now let's as well to send it to the back, do something interesting with this grass cover. Let's make a copy. So control D you know, to, to move and then control again to have a plus on our cursor, click. And right now we have this and click again in the same spot. So we have made a copy of that and we can change from the 
current grass cover to 50% fill of a white in my opinion and let's take this and make it trans transparent and now we are starting to get something interesting perhaps we need to take it to 25 percent and that looks good because it sends our texture to the back even further and if you don't want that effect on this area right here easy we can suspend the grouping and select all the grass texture which is in our plot for example and delete it and now we have some interesting things where we have a faded background and a grass a highlight of the area which we are interested in and in order to add that interest let's also bring this thing to the top so right click so select this thing let's right click outside here display order bring it to front so now we have this uh, boundary to the front and let's also change the color to red such that it sort of highlights that area so these forms as well which are super dark they aren't meant to look like this but because we cut through them you know they are being shaded dark so let me take them to a lighter gray such that yeah the attention shifts from them to what we have here so if you wanted to to sort of show where the uh, contours start to to change in gradient you could i'm going to alt click to pick this 25 percent of a white color with a transparent background we could space click on areas like this and you can see that we start to highlight those regions that are all right so now we have that and we could you know increase percentages now this should be 50 percent and this one should be i think 75 percent and now you can see that sort of gradient that communicates that this is rising which is awesome and i imagine if you were to do it for the whole site it would be incredible but sometimes you just don't have time for such things yeah if you like it be my guest and go ahead and do it and i think that we need to add also a little bit of change to the this road right here so let's make a copy of this road and overlay with a percentage feel of a white of a white color yes with a transparent background and now you can see that even the road as well has been pushed backward which should be the same thing that we do for something like this pavement area just making a copy of it and making sure we are on white and we take that to 25% and be sure to change to transparent background and now we have sent the pavement as well backward and if you wanted to make that distinction you could as well move this backward by using offset edge and now you can see that we have that transition from outside of the site to the inside of the site and you can see that you can do a whole lot of things the same thing that you would try to do in photoshop by trying to you know send some things to the background by fading them and bring other things to the front by making them back to 100 percent and i think that we could do is bring in some objects which are going to be our trees so you can literally type in tree and find the true 2d trees here so you can see this plan here so under all parameters we can choose any style and i think we need to just go to the tree plan styles here and we have style 3 selected which i like and in this 2d representation we can change what the control line is going to be like so for now let me choose this one right here and the field type is going to be background and that background pen i like to put it on transparent so that we can see through the tree pretty cool and before we go we i like to also you know in preview and positioning determine how big it's going to be so for now let me make it five meters i wish this thing was linked such that we don't have to type in this thing twice 
well. So I would say, okay, and place it in. So now we have that tree right there. And you can decide to orient it the way that you want. For example, because we have a shadow on this side, we could make it like that. And then control U in order to spread this thing. Yeah, I could spread them about six meters apart. And there we have it, something like that. And the key to having your trees looking good is to variate them. Just make sure you have uh, a variety of them. Not so many, but, you know, variety is key. And when we choose another style, you can see that that looks much better. Again, those shadows that we have put on top of the green don't look convincing. So you want to go ahead and select every one of them. And we need to just make them a little darker. I quite like the ones in within the buildings themselves, but the ones on the outside, mm -mm, not quite convincing. So once I have every one of them selected, don't forget to select also the ones on the contexts here. I like to group them such that next time I want to affect them. They're easy for me to find. And I like to change this from a lighter one to a dark one. And now we have a much more contrastier shadow, which is kind of cool because you can feel the depth of these forms and these ones as well. All right, so now we can also start to populate the trees around the site. Being careful that we are aware where these trees are located on site. So be sure to put the trees where they are on site. And the most important ones, of course, are the ones which you put on inside the site because, you know, these are the trees that I am proposing. So I like to change how they look like. Perhaps these ones will be a bit lighter, which makes them stand out a little bit more. So go ahead and put those in, in places like this. I can change the type of it to something like this style 10, right? Which is going to sort of protect my cars from the sun. Just have them there and there. So you can go ahead and have a number of them like we did in the illustration. That is it. So when is this drawing important? The thing is, this drawing is good for illustration, especially in the early stages of the design, when you want to convey your ideas of how the site is going to be utilized in context with the existing site. So this is a very important drawing in terms of planning and site planning. Uh, but you want to get rid of all these colors when it gets to working drawings. So this is it. This is basically the thing that you need to know. You might be a little bit more ambitious than I am by adding some textures as well in the inside of these designs. But you just know what to do if you want to add them as well. Well, again, you don't want to be over ambitious because image fields can be a little too heavy for your PC. So having too many fields can make your files so big and so heavy and a nightmare to work with. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.